Donald Trump underperforms in New Hampshire, but still eked out a win this week. But independents and mainstream Republicans are fleeing from the MAGA takeover of their former party. I wonder why. Trump's New Hampshire speech was about as unhinged as you get after he eked out that win. Sweaty, seething, oozing orange makeup. Donald Trump stood there extorting Nikki Haley, mocking her dress. He then followed up with a rampage of posts on social media saying, if you contribute any money to Nikki Haley, you are banished. You are hereby banned from MAGA. He also made a bunch of other posts mocking Nikki Haley's racial identity, some real disturbing stuff. And then Marjorie Taylor Greene, his sidekick on the campaign and others in MAGA, They called the New Hampshire results fake and that anyone who isn't MAGA must be immediately eradicated from the party. That's the message they're going with, folks. Okay. Trump also took the stand for under three minutes in the federal defamation trial in New York today brought against him by E. Jean Carroll. Federal Judge Lewis Kaplan controlled that courtroom, finally like a judge needs to control that courtroom, and would not let Donald Trump further defame E. Jean Carroll or try to relitigate the last case brought against him by E. Jean Carroll where he was previously found liable for sexual assault and defamation. We'll talk about what went down there. President Biden, meanwhile, received an important endorsement from the United Auto Workers Union, the UAW president gave a very powerful speech calling Donald Trump a scab and talking about how Donald Trump stands against everything that the union supports, where President Biden stood with the workers and earned their endorsement. And with President Biden's support also, Democrats and Republicans in the Senate and House Democrats support this as well. We're working on a bipartisan border bill because that's all MAGA Republicans talk about. And there are urgent issues that need to be addressed and necessary resources need to be provided. So let's do a bipartisan solution, right? Well, wrong when it comes to MAGA because Donald Trump ordered the MAGA Republicans not to do a deal, to kill any deal. Since actually solving the problem on the border, Trump perceives would be a winning issue for Biden. And Trump perceives that whining about the border is an important issue to him. So on that basis, MAGA Republicans are killing a bipartisan border bill. MAGA Republicans want to cause harm to our economy, to our border, to our allies. It's sad that this is coming from within. Good news to report as well, though. More infrastructure projects are being funded across the country. GDP growth exceeded expectations in the fourth quarter. The stock market keeps reaching and hitting record highs each day. So your 401ks are probably up. That's good news. Consumer spending is up. So good news there on the fundamentals of our economy. And good news here on the fundamentals of the Midas Touch Network. Folks, we hit 2 million subscribers just a few hours ago. We did it, Midas Mighty. Thanks to your support. 2 million subscribers. I want to show you the moment where we hit 2 million before bringing in Brett and Jordy officially. Play the tape. The moment the Midas Touch Network hit 2 million. Play it. (laughs) 
It was actually me sitting here in my living room, like, oh, I did it. yeah, yeah, we did it. That's actually very similar. What also, I want to also state that the Midas Touch <laughs> YouTube channel was just ranked the number one YouTube channel in all of the United States of America across genres. Most importantly, beating Fox News. It's Midas Touch, Fox, and then Forbes. Number one in the U.S. And oh. look, I think this pro-democracy message is resonating. This pro-normalcy message is resonating. This rejection of chaos is resonating. And we are just so grateful for you, the Midas Mighty. None of this is possible. This community continues to grow. You give us the energy. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Brett? Jordy, how you doing? Jordy's almost going to be a dad. It could be any day now at this point. It could, could happen be during the show. The show. It could, could happen right now the during the live show. I have my phone right next to me just in case, but I, I we're ready. And Brett, I'll, I'll just jump in first because I'm already speaking. Midas please, Mighty. please. Shout out to the Midas Mighty. Two million subs. I won't belabor it too much because Ben did just such a fantastic job. But thank you guys. None of this is possible without y'all. And what this shows, it really just shows a downright rejection of anti-truth and just pro-normalcy the the welcoming community whether you are a day one supporter or you're a supporter as of today and subscriber to the Midas Touch YouTube channel like what this shows is what we're building here and when I say we I mean all of you who are listening and watching as well just a, a message built on normalcy a message built on data like no spin just generally giving you the facts and and, and playing the clips and letting y'all decide for yourself you know it's media unlike anything that's out there and I think that's what's resonating with you guys so much so thank you Midas Mighty for your continued support and on to 3 million. Let's go, Brett. On to 3 million. Well, the Pro Democracy Coalition is strong, folks. The Pro Normal Coalition is strong and I'm feeling really really good about what we've seen over the past week and I'm excited to get into everything of what we've seen, but we're finally getting to your point, Jordy, the data, not polls, not what does this online poll say, not this poll says something different than that poll, what do I believe, but actual hard data of people showing up, going to the polls and telling people their opinions via their votes. And that hard data, I think, has been really illuminating over the past weeks. And I think there are a lot of warning signs out there right now for the Republican Party that I know that they are terrified of as they strap themselves, tie themselves to this complete and utter loser, a proven loser. And so we're going to get into all of that. But I got to say also just thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you to everybody for 2 million subscribers. Thank you for making us the number one YouTube channel. And by the way, this is not the number one news YouTube channel, which would be incredible in and of itself. This is the number one of all YouTube channels based on engagement. It's because you guys are out there watching the videos, commenting, liking the videos. All of that plays right here on the chart. So thank you, thank you. Thank and you, I think Sam. we're going to continue to grow, especially as you have all of the actual data out there, yet still in the face of the data, the media pursues its own narrative. Like after New Hampshire, by the way, where President Biden overperformed Democrats in New Hampshire, overperformed prior appearances in New Hampshire, when he was a write-on, when he's not even on the ballot, overperformed in college areas, right? That's data that I want to know as the media tries, right? As the media wants to push narratives about young voters and this and that. I don't see, other than the Midas Touch Network, I don't see lots of reporting about that. And again, all I'm following is what the actual data showed in New Hampshire, not some contrived narrative. Also, when you see the independents and mainstream Republicans fleeing, think about that series that we've been doing on the Midas Touch Network for two years now, right? What do we call it? The mass exodus. And one of the things I would say is, anecdotally, there's 10,000, 20,000 people 
who are sharing their stories with me. And I said, I don't know if I can extrapolate from these thousands and thousands of messages of mainstream Republicans and independents who are writing to me and Brett and Jordy and our network here. But I'm like, if that amount of people are going out of their way to send messages, I think that there may be a trend, but I didn't want to set this narrative. I just wanted to read the stories and we would spend a lot of time doing that. You can go back on our channel. It's one of my favorite series sharing those stories, but we've got hard data. And one of the main reasons Donald Trump underperformed in New Hampshire is he's losing all the independents and mainstream Republicans. Trump has consolidated this cult-like loud MAGA base. They're certainly not the silent majority. They are a very loud, obnoxious, small group of Americans that now constitute the Republican Party. The Republican Party is dead. It's full-blown MAGA. And Donald Trump says that. And Marjorie Taylor Greene says that. They go, we want to eradicate you. If You use the word eradication if you're not obedient to Donald Trump. And Trump gives these speeches and he goes, people say that the Republican Party is only 30% MAGA. That's not true. We're 95% MAGA. And if you're not MAGA, get out of here. Babe. That's their message. In elections, it's usually about building coalitions, building bridges to people, trying to grow your support. And what the MAGA Republicans are doing is they love their little echo chamber. They love their little cult. And if you're not super obedient, get out. By the way, even if you are obedient, but you make a mistake like that Trump supporter, Quarucci, I forget oh the guy's God, yeah. name. He took a photo <laughs> with Alina Haba at the New Hampshire party. And because Alina Haba told the federal judge that her parents had COVID and that she wasn't feeling that good, that was one of the grounds for the continuance. She didn't want these photos posted. So this like MAGA kid who was there who took this photo with Alina Haba, who's more of a MAGA influencer at this point than, than a real actual lawyer, he posts it. And then the MAGA security guards boot this kid out and throw him on the streets, basically, because he took a photo with Alina Haba, who got out of a court appearance in a case involving Donald Trump defaming a woman he was previously found liable for raping. That's MAGA for you right now, folks. Follow that Mad Libs right there. But I want to show you this. This is Trump's supposed to be a victory speech where you bring people together. This is him threatening Nikki Haley for not dropping out and saying she's going to end up under investigation. I think we got this clip. Let's play it. These are very dishonest people, and you're always fighting them. And just a little note to Nikki. She's not going to win. She's not going to win. But if she did, she would be under investigation by those people in 15 minutes. And I could tell you five reasons why already. Not big reasons. A little stuff that she doesn't want to talk about. But she will be under investigation within minutes. And so would Ron have been. But he decided to get out. He decided to get out. Now, Vivek, I don't think would be at all because he's perfect, right? Really weird behavior. And Jordy just reminded me as well. We still have our Kamala Harris. We carried emoji. over that. I can't, we can't forget. We can't forget. We, there was a lot of legwork that went into that one last episode. We're carrying it over. 119 memberships until we unlock the Kamala Harris Let's emoji. Go. And Brett, do we have the special Midas Mighty emoji also? Already yet? in. That one is a thank you for the 2 million subscribers. You could access that right now if you're on YouTube. In the chat right you know, now. one of the funny things about also what uh, Trump said about Vivek over there in that uh, clip is actually like if any of them might be under some sort of investigation, it would probably be Ramaswamy because he ran this like a weird penny stock scheme. Like that's how he became a billionaire. Uh, and, and, and so like he just is basically saying, if you're in MAGA, you're safe. If you're not in MAGA, guess what? You may be in trouble. 
not to, they, you may have, I may have some things on you. I'm not going to say what they are, but you may be in criminal trouble. And that is not what like a confident individual does. That is what a thug does. That is what a mob boss does. And Donald Trump is operating like a mob boss. And this entire Republican party that bows down to his every word is operating like a criminal syndicate. Mm -hmm. You see this weird moment with uh, Tim Scott on stage. Like Bruh. when I want a like, cringy, I, I don't know the word for this, but this is just, it's humiliating. And they all look like losers. Like this doesn't look strong. It's a group of losers. And it's not surprising because guess what? Trump's been a loser his entire life. Not that big of a secret. This is someone who's bankrupted everything he's touched basically his entire life and then grifted off his marks. So now I'm just watching, we're all watching together, the Trump Republican Party, MAGA, and it is dangerous, but it is freaking weird as well. And I watch this and I go, oh, gr like gross, weak, <laughs> strange. Here, play this clip of, of with him and Tim Scott and the way he attacks Nikki Haley, you must hate her. You must hate her. It's like watching like a first grade petulant bully. Like, you, do you like me or do we hate her? And then, by the way, when you watch Trump, like when you watch Trump's speeches, he goes, so then I went and I, and I told Kim Jong-un that our weapons are like, whoosh, a whoosh, a, a whoosh, a whoosh, whoosh. <laughs> and, that's, and that's how he gives these speeches. And I'm like, oh, my God, this is... This is just so embarrassing, so embarrassing for our great front runner of the Republican play, Party. Play, play this clip of Tim Scott. Play it. Did you ever think that she actually appointed you, Tim? <laughs> and think of it, appointed and you're the senator of his state and she endorsed me. You must really hate her. <laughs> no, it's uh, it's a shame. It's a shame. Uh oh. I just love you. No, that's good. That's why he's a great politician. So, so cringy. And and notice he also has a bit of a cognitive moment there as well. He calls Tim Scott she. He said, she endorsed me. And it's this just mm. bizarro moment that we've seen all the time in Trump world where you have to publicly bend the knee to him and you have to debase and humiliate yourself in front of the entire world in order it's part of the initiation ritual into the maga cult and so that was his m moment right there where donald trump humiliated tim scott and tim scott was happy to go along with it really weird weird stuff and here's what donald trump posted like as i've said before if someone just posted things like this on on any topic, like they'd be disqualified from working at any company, right? In the United States, like yet alone the highest office, like people who behave like this, right? You'd be sent to HR immediately and you'd be terminated. Like no, no one can exist. Oh, it's, a great, it's a great analogy. Like imagine if someone just did like a LinkedIn post, the way Trump posts on true social about another coworker, <laughs> like immediately sent to HR, immediately fired. Yeah, and this is the modern day Republican Party. Nikki Bird Brain Come on. Haley is very bad for the Republican. She's very bad for the Republican Party and indeed our country. Her false statements, derogatory comments, and humiliating public loss is demeaning to true American patriots. Her anger should be aimed at her third rate political consultants and more importantly, crooked Joe Biden and those that are destroying our country. Then he puts this in caps because. This is not how normal people talk. Not the people who will save it. I knew Nikki well. She was average at best, is not the one to take on world leaders. You literally appointed her for that job to take on world leaders when she was working for you. <laughs> and she never did. That was up to me. And that is why they respected us. They literally laughed at us. He would go into places and get laughed at by world leaders. The president of the United States would step into rooms and world leaders would laugh at our country and laugh at this weak, loser, coward, like, oh, crap, how did the United States become this way? And then he goes on to say, anybody that makes a contribution to bird brain from this moment forth will be permanently barred 
from the MAGA camp. We don't want them and will not accept them because we put America first and always will. I mean, what, what the heck does that even mean? And then the extortive language right there and the culty language, you will be permanently barred from the MAGA camp. Again, who, who behaves like this? You know what this post, Ben, says to me? It says that he is just scared of Nikki Haley and the folks that aren't MAGA that exists within the Republican Party. Now, that's why he has to go out and lie and say things like it was a humiliating loss for Nikki Haley because he knows that's not the truth. He's backed himself into a corner because he thinks that the entire Republican Party is MAGA. But the problem is, Ben, when he attacks folks like Nikki Haley and Nikki Haley supporters and voters, he continues to shorten and shorten and shorten his circle. It gets closer and closer in because all of a sudden, if you're not pure blooded MAGA, you're a rhino in Donald Trump's eyes. And there's a lot of voters out there that aren't pure blooded MAGA that consider themselves part of the Republican Party. It's also the language of autocrats and dictators throughout history. Like the first thing that dictators always do as they're trying to acquire power is they purge their own party of dissent. They don't go after the opposition party. That's not their first step. Their first step is to target the own quote unquote enemies within. And so that's what Donald Trump is doing here. That's what you see Marjorie Taylor Greene doing. And so to your point, Jordy, if you are not pure MAGA, then you do not belong on this party. In fact, you need to be eradicated. And I'm not just pulling that word eradicated, which has been used throughout some of the worst times in history. I'm not just pulling that out of nowhere. This is something that they are openly saying. Here is Marjorie Taylor Greene from the weekend after New Hampshire, op or during New Hampshire, openly saying that she wants the quote unquote eradication of anybody in the Republican Party who does not support Donald Trump. This is a true change for the Republican Party. It says that not only do we support President Trump, we support his policies. And any Republican that isn't willing to adapt these policies, we are completely eradicating from the party. So it's up to Nikki Haley uh, what she does. Eradicating is the language. And then she uh, did not appear to be sober, although I don't know. She then says that political consultants who work for Nikki Haley should be thrown in jail. So eradicated and thrown in jail. Here, play this clip. This primary is over with. Can you imagine being a donor and lighting your money on fire like that? Donating to Nikki Haley, begging her to stay in the race. I mean, these political consultants, they should go to jail for continuing this campaign. I mean, it is so dishonest. I can't even believe it. By the way, that's her boyfriend. I was going to say, she did 90% of these TV hits now with her boyfriend. Her it's boyfriend, the weirdest thing. User, her boyfriend, who in his previous job frequently dressed in drag. Our mm -hmm. reporters found the photos of him dressing in drag. And then he said that, well, it's fun when he does it, but he's against other people who do it. And then you have Marjorie Taylor Greene also talking about... Uh, how the vote was fake. The results were fake in New Hampshire. These were fake numbers. There's no way Nikki Haley actually had the support. And again, everything they say is some conspiracy, some flat earth thing every single time. Play this clip. These are fake numbers. Nikki Haley does not have this much support. She's going to come out and claim that she's rising in the polls. All these fake news media people up here on this platform are going to claim that Nikki Haley is rising in the polls. It's a total, complete lie. Absolute lie. Tonight, Nikki Haley was defeated. The problem is she's going to be dumb enough and she's going to be a fake candidate and she's going to keep going and we're going to destroy her in South Carolina. It's going to be a, com a complete humiliation. I can't wait to see it happen. So Guys, it was a completely, <laughs> it's a completely <laughs> fake. The numbers are fake. <laughs> she's a fake. <laughs> Everybody's a fake.
Did I tell you I love him? I love, do we know how much we love? I'm going to eradicate you if you're not MAGA. Uh, did, did you see the photos of Hunter Biden's dick that I- I have him on my phone. <laughs> I, have, I can show you. Because I'm planning another hearing and, and I'm going to I'm gonna take that photo out. I mean, guys, guys. This is this is humiliating to our country. Yes. And fortunately, the data that we are getting, fortunately, is that independents, mainstream Republicans, people who are not affiliated with political parties and progressives, liberals, Democrats are joining together and saying, no, not that we may have some policy disagreements. We're going to save those until after we save our country. Mm -hmm. And then we can go back and talk about certain policies. But this MAGA thing is very, very strange and very dangerous. As I say, MAGA equals fascism plus idiocracy. And fortunately, the idiocracy for now has exceeded the ability of MAGA to implement their fascist designs. But here are the troubling signs for MAGA, the new GOP. 64% of New Hampshire Republicans say they do not consider themselves MAGA, where Trump claims it's 95%. Nikki Haley won independence by 20%. Wait, no, 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 no. Trump claims it's 5% who do not consider themselves MAGA, and it's 64% of people who do not consider yeah, themselves Yeah, he says that, sorry. Trump says 95% consider themselves MAGA. <laughs> That 5% do not consider themselves, that 95 considers themselves MAGA. Haley won independence by 22 points. 35% of New Hampshire Republicans said they would not vote for Trump no matter what in a general election. Seven of 10 Haley voters say they would not vote for Donald Trump. You talk about President Biden overperforming as a right. You don't hear a lot of those stories, right? There's no narratives there that even though Biden was not on the ballot, he absolutely crushed against Dean Phillips, who actually had a ton of money being thrown into New Hampshire. Imagine having being the only name on the ballot and being rejected. Like, <laughs> how, it's like, how is that even physically possible? Like, like literally the only name on the ballot. And someone's like, nah, I'm going to take the extra effort and I'm going to write in a name. Like, that's got to be pretty humiliating as well. But and again, it just goes with- back to the point that like people just want normalcy they just want stability in a time of complete lunacy you want a statesman at the helm of things and when you look at the marjorie taylor green sorry marjorie taylor peen clip i mean when you look when when you really dissect that ben and i want to talk about just one more second here fake numbers uh fake news meanwhile she's on rsbn what else did she say she's a nikki haley's a fake candidate she humiliated her like if you are if you consider yourself just a normal, you know, run of the mill Republican and you're looking at Marjorie Taylor Greene, someone who is the face of the modern day Republican Party, and she's out there, Ben, like she's some someone who's just wasted out of bar, just spouting off these bizarre conspiracy theories on live TV. You have <laughs> to think inward and be like, I don't want to associate with this behavior. Like that's not representative of me or what I want this country to be representative as a whole. If you were at a bar and you saw someone like Marjorie Taylor Greene, you would say, you're like, this this person has had a bit too much. I got to get out of here. Showing dick pics like, to people. Yeah, you walk it's, away. It's get, walk it's, away. It's, it's getting weird. This is a weird scene here. I got to get out of here. And it goes beyond like if you consider yourself a Republican. I want to just take it a step further. If That's you consider point. yourself an American, yeah. this should embarrass you. Like this is not American, period, full stop. End of story. And when they say things like fake candidate, fake numbers, and when you see like today, the RNC is mulling over this concept where they're just going to declare Donald Trump the presumptive nominee. This was their plan today. We are going to just bypass any of the results of the future primaries. We're just going to declare as the RNC, Donald Trump is our nominee. Sorry, Nikki Haley. Bye, bye, bye. This is kind of the stuff of Russia. You know, this is what Vladimir Putin would do. This is why Vladimir Putin wins with 95% of the vote, because all those other votes are fake. 
All those other candidates are fake. They don't count. And what Marjorie Taylor Greene and Donald Trump are doing is they are disenfranchising, and the RNC, they're disenfranchising millions and millions and millions of Republican voters and independents. And they're saying, guess what? You're not MAGA, so your vote does not matter here. And I hope that they remember that in November, that they are being disenfranchised by the party that they have supported. Well, look, I want to show a short montage of some of these independent voters and Republicans, mainstream Republicans who previously voted for Donald Trump, some in both 2016 and 2020 who say, never again. I'll show that in just uh, a little bit. Then I also want to talk about how the MAGA Republicans have recklessly killed one of the toughest border security bills in a generation that mm -hmm. Democrats agreed to, that President Biden supported so that they can go out and hold press conferences and whine about it. That's just the facts. I want to talk about that, but I want to take a quick break. And before doing that, I want to remind everybody that we're just 84, Jordy Let's says, go. 84, 84 memberships away count. to unlock the Vice President Kamala Harris emoji. Let's go. You already have the Midas Let's Mighty go. emoji unlocked. Thank you, everybody, for helping us hit 2 million so together. Oh, Thank you go. so much. Let's take a quick break, and we will be right back. Do you ever feel like money is just flying out of your account and you have no idea where it's going? Well, I know. It's all those subscriptions. Now think about it. Between streaming services, fitness apps, delivery services, parenting apps, it's endless. And I'm guilty of this too. So I used Rocket Money to help me find out what subscriptions I'm actually spending money on. It was eye-opening. And I had them cancel the ones that I didn't want anymore. Rocket Money is a personal finance app that finds and cancels your unwanted subscriptions, monitors your spending, and helps lower your bills. Now, I can see all of my subscriptions in one place, and if I see something that I don't want, I can cancel it with a tap. I never have to get on the phone with customer service. They'll even try to get you a refund for the last couple of months of wasted money and negotiate to lower your bills for you by up to 20%. Now, all you have to do is take a picture of your bill, and Rocket Money, they take care care of the rest. Rocket Money has over 5 million users and has helped save its members an average of $720 a year with over $500 million in canceled subscriptions. Stop wasting money on things that you don't use. Cancel your unwanted subscriptions by going to rocketmoney.com slash Midas Touch. That's rocketmoney.com slash Midas Touch. rocketmoney.com slash Midas Touch. Cat food has been the same forever, and it's time for cat food to move into the 21st century. That's why you've got to try Smalls. Are you still feeding your cat kibble? Make it your New Year's resolution to have your cat eating healthier food with Smalls. Smalls cat food is protein-packed recipes made with preservative-free ingredients you'd find in your fridge, and it's delivered right to your door. Smalls was started back in 2017 by a couple of guys home cooking cat food in small batches for their friends. A few short years later, they've served millions of meals to cats around the world. Smalls has helped my cat ensure they're getting the right amount of protein, plus they're genuinely excited for mealtime. Plus, I feel better knowing I'm feeding my cat real food, not burnt kibble. At this point, you might be wondering, why can't I just feed my cat kibble? Believe it or not, your cute kitty descended from ferocious desert cats who hunted live prey for food, and your cat isn't any different. They still need fresh protein packed meals to be at their best. Other cat food brands know this, but they choose to put their wallets first. They fill their food with mysterious meat byproducts, artificial flavoring, and preservatives with names I don't even want to try to pronounce. If that sounds gross, imagine having to try to eat it every day. After making the switch to Smalls, 90% of cat owners reported overall health improvements. That's a big deal. The team at Smalls is so confident Confident your cat will love their product that you can try it risk-free. That means they will refund you if your cat won't eat their food. It's 2024. Are you still feeding your cat kibble? Head to smalls.com slash Midas and use promo code Midas at checkout for 50% off your first order plus free shipping. That's the best offer you'll find, but you have to use our code Midas 
for 50% off your first order. One last time, that's promo code MIDAS for 50% off your first order plus free shipping. Go to smalls, S-M-A-L-L-S dot com slash MIDAS now. Welcome back. We are live. Some great sponsors right there. I got to tell you, though, I am infuriated by these MAGA Republicans killing the border deal. And it is so important, though, that we just get the truth out about what happened here. Donald Trump ordered MAGA Mike Johnson and his MAGA Republicans. There's a smaller group of them in the Senate and pretty much all the MAGA members of the House of Representatives or all the Republicans are MAGA in the House of Representatives, and they're killing the bill, a bipartisan bill, one of the toughest border bills that would have addressed the problem. What do you do as a country where you literally have one political party, the MAGA Republican Party, that wants to cause damage to the country to help their cult leader and won't do deals, won't form compromises? I mean, heck, even in like in other countries where there are coalition governments, sometimes the, the equivalent of a far left and a far right form coalitions together all the times to find areas of agreement. You rarely have a situation where you have one political party here, Democrats and pro-democracy, whose entire incentive structure is you have to actually pass policy. And then on the other hand, the Republicans who are all MAGA, their incentive structure is just to destroy the other party at all costs, even if that means destroy the country. It is a very odd thing that exists a very dangerous thing that exists. And when the media reports it out, like President Biden unable to pass critical legislation, well, maybe media, you can explain what that actually means. That President Biden is trying to do a border deal, that all of the Democrats by and large support the border deal. A lot of Republicans support it, but Donald Trump and his MAGA crew don't. They're the ones who are killing it. Why is it so hard just to report on that objective data? And it's not hard. That's the answer. It's a rhetorical question. And it's because the media likes that narrative. They want to push that narrative. Biden is failing to do this, failing to do that. He's doing everything in his possible power to actually do it. So identify the source of the problem. And by the way, that's why I think this network is growing the way it is because there's nothing that I said there that was hyperbolic. That's just what the data is. And a little bit later in the show, I'm going to show you video of Mitt Romney and other Republicans saying that's the deal. That's what actually happened. But I think we're getting through to independent voters. I'm confident we are into mainstream Republicans. And look, that mass exodus series that we do here at the Midas Touch Network looked a lot like this montage that I'm about to share with you. These are the stories that we've been sharing here for over two years at the Midas Touch Network. Take a look at this short montage of New Hampshire voters who say they will never vote for Donald Trump. Let's play the clip. Yale is clearly the one that has the best chance of, of defeating Trump. And that's your top priority, defeating Trump? That's that's my top priority. I voted for him twice, and I was just humiliated when I saw that the guy I voted for, the way he handled himself after he lost. Anything but Trump. <laughs> that was your priority? <laughs> that's my priority. Is that the biggest reason you supported Nikki Haley? Yeah, I'd say. Donald Trump really disgraced himself. Why Nikki Haley? You, you can, because my conscience won't allow me to vote for a criminal. Sorry. And and what has led you to vote for Haley instead? What do you like about Haley? What are some of the attributes that drew you to her? She's not Trump. I voted for Trump the very first election. Yes, I did. In 2016? In 2016. And, and why was, not now? <laughs> why not now? Because I feel that I'm not going to tell you what I really feel, um, but I think that he's not very on, a very honest person. Um, and, he, and I think that he uh, did a real disservice to our country on January 6th. And was that when you lost faith in him? No, I'd lost faith in him a long time before that. I want to, uh, I'm 74 years old. I've lived in a constitutional democracy all my life. I want to remain that way, and I want my grandchildren to grow up in one. And Not a dictatorship. 
And I'm curious, over the last two elections, um, mm -hmm. have you voted Trump in the past? Was it something where you voted for him, you trusted him, and you were disappointed? Yes, I voted for him in 2016. I am a registered Republican, and I, I regretted that vote almost immediately, <laughs> mm -hmm. and, uh, especially on his trip to Europe where he insulted our allies and praised Putin. And, Brett, I want to toss it over to you for a moment to get your reaction and talk about what Donald Trump's former press secretary, Kaylee McEnany, had to say. But I, I do want to say this message to all of the Midas Mighty who listen to this. We may strongly disagree with the things that Nikki Haley says, and I mean strongly disagree, but it is really important that the pro-democracy community be welcoming to the types of voters who you just saw right there. I don't want to mock them at all for their support of Nikki Haley or their support of other candidates other than Donald Trump. It is so critical at this moment that we work together. I know that may be hard to do, but it is so critical that we, because look, politics is very tribal, right? And people who have grown up identifying because they're, parents or grandparents or their in their entire life, they were a Republican. So they feel this loyalty, even if it's kind of arbitrary to the Republican party, it's hard to get out of that where your whole identity, and it's hard to even see that you're not even wanted there anymore. And I know that's no excuse, but one of the goals of this network, one of the kind of lifelong goals that I, I, I and we truly have is to unite people and is to bring people together around democracy and normalcy. And then in the future, we could go on and talk about certain policies. But right now, that's the call to action that, that we have. Brett, tell us about Kaylee. Maybe with your mic on. <laughs> <laughs> that, that would be helpful, wouldn't it? Uh, Kaylee McEnany uh, went on Fox News. She's a Fox News host. It's part of the mm. uh, Trump admin to uh, Fox News pipeline that they got set yep. up over there. And Kaylee McEnany, uh, you know, just said the truth. Shockingly, uh, she's not somebody who's known to tell the truth. And she said that, you know what? That was actually a really good night for Joe Biden, the, the night of the New Hampshire primary. This comment set Trump off in such a huge way. I'll play it for you now. Here's why I say this. This was actually a fairly good night for Joe Biden. When you look at our voter analysis, only 10 percent said I would not vote for Joe Biden if he's the nominee. He won a plurality of voters who said he was too old. He won a majority of voters who are upset about the Gaza war. So the divides in the Democrat Party, and this is a small sample size, but perhaps aren't as stark as one would think. But when you look at the Republican Party, seven in 10 Nikki Haley voters said, I would not vote for Trump. There was a Des Moines Register poll, 43% said, no, I wouldn't vote for Trump. If I'm Trump, I sit back and I exclusively focus on the general election. I take the posture of a presumptive nominee. I focus on number one, uniting the party, and number two, winning the independence, which Nikki Haley won 55 to 39%. That's what I would do. Nikki Haley, I mean, the closest margin is 30% in the states ahead. For all intents and purposes, he's the presumptive nominee. And so, of course, Donald Trump reacted the way that you'd expect. He attacked Kayleigh McEnany, his own former press secretary, and called her a rhino because a rhino to Donald Trump is anybody who does not support MAGA. This is going back to the theme that we had earlier about this purge of the party of any dissenters. And it does not matter. It does not matter for a second how long that you have been loyal to Trump or to MAGA. The second you do something wrong. The second you do as much as look at him the wrong way, then you are in big trouble. Just like that individual who Ben was speaking about earlier, the young kid or whoever it was who was kicked out of the Trump Quattrucci. I mean, this is a guy as he was being kicked out of the event, he was like, what are you doing? I knocked X amount of doors for Donald Trump over the years. I'm his biggest supporter. Like this is somebody who is deep in the MAGA cult, but he did something, take a photograph with Alina Abba that he didn't know that he wasn't supposed to do and posted it on social media and boom, excommunicated from the cult. You are out of the cult. And to Ben's other point before about, you know, making sure that we 
invite others into the party and that we're welcoming in a pro-democracy community. You know, it's one of the things I do pride about our viewers here. And we get emails all the time from people who say, you know, I'm progressive. I, I'm, I'm a Bernie supporter. And we get emails all the time from people who say, I'm a conservative. I've been a blood red conservative my entire life. But we're at this unique moment where there's this different political alignment where it's not liberal versus conservative, progressive versus conservative, moderates. It's, it's, it's not the case. It truly is pro democracy mm -hmm. versus autocracy. And we need to be focused on that. And while Trump continues to shrink his coalition, we need to be focused on growing our coalition. And and one of the biggest things that I want to urge to everybody also is not to be fooled by Republican propaganda. And what I'm getting at with this is Republicans are very good at one thing. Well, they're a few things. They're good lying. at lying. But the other thing that they're good at, I knew you were going to say that. The other thing that they're good at is breaking things. It's a lot easier to break things than to build things. It's a lot easier to tear things apart than to put together a comprehensive bill that actually solves issues, right? And what they rely upon is that if they break something just enough and if they make you miserable enough, that you will just blame President Biden. You will just blame whoever that you perceive is in charge. And I've seen this all too frequently. Like last week, I saw something on social media. Somebody was complaining, why would I vote for President Biden again? I live in Florida and they're banning books in the state and they're, they have a six-week abortion ban. This all happened under President Biden's watch. And that's a fundamental issue of education. And I think yep. it's upon all of us also to educate people that, you know what, we have this system of federalism. The states are able to make their own laws as long as they're not in conflict with the United States Constitution. And we need to understand who is inflicting the damage and why they are inflicting the damage. That's exactly what Republicans hope for. When Republicans take away your rights, they hope that they just bully you to the point where you give up and you say, you know what? That's it. I'm done. And then you let them go in and take power. And what happens in that case? Those rights get further stripped away. They get further eroded. And then it's generations and generations, if not forever, your rights are gone. That's the and result of you believe out. they convince you to believe that you're not worth it, mm -hmm. that you don't deserve it. So then when you have your hands out and they give you, you know, some bread or some peanuts, thank you, Donald. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Like our country was built on the exact opposite of that premise. The whole idea of the, you know, American dream, the whole idea that, you know, you could be successful through a meritocracy here. And don't get me wrong. There's a lot of systemic issues in our country, but the arc had always been bending in the right direction with stops and reversals, don't get me wrong, but heading in the right direction. And then with Trump pulled us back already right now, 60 years, 70 years, even more. You know, I teach a law class at a school in Southern California, and, and we talk about all the significant civil rights legislation even from the 1960s and into the 1970s. And we talk about all the monumental Supreme Court decisions from that time, giving people rights, recognizing their rights, recognizing their freedoms. And these were things that were supported on a bipartisan basis. And then to see that all being taken away right now, and then the misdirection by the MAGA Republicans to then blame the same way when it comes to the border, just to blame the Democrats. And it's such sociopathic behavior that I think sometimes the Democrats have a hard time kind of punching back against that and saying, no, you did it, because there's almost like this being startled with, whoa, 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 the audacity. You just blocked it and now you're blamed. Like it comes out of nowhere. Well, know their script. That's what they are doing. And, 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 and by the way, one other observation, Brett. I'm not going to play it here, but if you go back and you look at the 1979 Ba'ath Party purge by Saddam Hussein, where he had his party, his crew, his equivalent of a MAGA in the audience, 
And then he believed his second in command had a plot to try to overthrow him. He called out his own crew, his equivalent of MAGA, one by one, threw them out and executed them. And that's how he got his reputation as being this ruthless dictator. Before that, there were obviously signs of that as well. But if you go and watch that, it's it's been it's on videotape, and I don't want you to watch it now. I want you to stay watching the show, then watch it. <laughs> it looks like that could be Donald Trump there doing just that. And it is not hyperbole to say that's exactly what Donald Trump would do, mm-hmm. exactly what he wants to do. That's what he's telling us he's going to do. And then so from our perspective, from our perch at this network, when we see that, We call out that behavior, but then also observing the legacy media or mainstream media headlines on these things is is atrocious. Like we'll talk a little bit later, too, about President Biden's endorsement from the UAW, the United Auto Workers Union, which is one of the earliest times the UAW has ever endorsed. It was a full-throated endorsement. You don't get a more powerful spot-on endorsement. And I'm reading the articles like they would say, like belated endorsement, delayed endorsement. And they like dampened what this was. That was crazy. I'm like, why? The object, you're just lying. Like that's not, this is a big deal, a big day. You had President Biden stand on a freaking picket line with the workers when nobody thought a deal could be done. Mm -hmm. Nobody thought that the big three automakers were going to make that deal with the workers. But time and time again, President Biden stood there literally by their side and behind the scenes and has made these deals happen. And the legacy media goes like belatedly as though like it was tepid, as though the UAW didn't want to make this endorsement. I'm like, I'm like, what? Show you this too. Nikki Haley continues to fight on. I mean, she's saying she's going to fight on through the convention. We'll see about that. But she pointed out in her speech and in her recent speeches since New Hampshire that Trump's a loser. He loses everything. You know, and, and it's weird that that's how you have to communicate with the MAGA in terms of these like binary winner, loser, 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 because, <laughs> because you can't have intelligent adult conversations. So she has to say, look, just look at what the data is. He lost in 2018, 2020. Here, if we got this clip, let's play it. With Donald Trump, Republicans have lost almost every competitive election. We lost the Senate. We lost the House. We lost the White House. We lost in 2018. We lost in 2020. And we lost in 2022. The worst kept secret in politics is how badly the Democrats want to run against Donald Trump. He's a loser! He's a loser! But he is. And he is. He's a lifelong loser. He's failed at everything. You know, I I teach, (laughs) one of the courses that I teach is on sports. You're a teacher. What would you say? Are you a professor? Let me tell the story, Jordy. I know, I know you're a dad to me, but don't be rude. Um, yes. He's st- I, Jordy's starting on the dad jokes earlier. Yeah, Jordy's starting on the dad jokes. So, J- no, I wasn't sure. The- I wasn't sure if it was the third or fourth time you referenced you were a professor this episode. But Well, a good way. So what do you want me to say? In, <laughs> I, I should just go. Uh, I should just talk about. Did you know that Donald Trump. No, keep going. You're doing one no, of the keep USF going. Just, I just thought it would be around. interesting to talk about how in a sports law context, Even when he tried to do a sports team, he like bankrupted the USFL. Like there's nothing that he touches that actually ends up in a positive, like in a positive (laughs) direction. It's, it's literally everything. So, so, so there, Jordy, yes, I'm, I'm a professor. There you go. The one thing I wanted to say to again about Donald Trump and just referencing the Kelly McEnany uh, incident as well. The guy is literally uh, he's the snake. Remember the video of the snake, Brett, that you so beautifully produced. He's a bow constrictor. And so what we look at here is he continues to shrink his base. He continues to alienate people who were closest to him, whether it was the person who was knocking on the doors for him that got the boot, whether it was Kelly McEnany, whether it's any sort of Nikki Haley supporter at this time. The guy is a boa constrictor, just constricting his base that much further every single day. I hope Nikki Haley stays in the race as long as possible because, quite frankly, 
as foul as it is to see him throw these insults and, and this hatred her way, like I think it really opens people's eyes up on a national stage of just how detestful this person is and how you really can't associate yourself with them if you consider yourself just a normal pro-democracy and just, just kind-hearted person. Ophiology, Jordy. Ophiology. It's the study of uh, snakes. snakes worldwide. <laughs> yeah, I, just think, I know. I'm a big fan of Ophiology. You know about Ophiology. Big fan. Oh, man. Let's talk about very briefly, because his testimony was very brief, Donald Trump's testimony in the E. Jean Carroll federal defamation case. We're wrapping up that trial. Of course, Donald Trump was found liable back in May for sexual abuse and defamation. This is another defamation case against Donald Trump for statements he made in 2019 with punitive damages because he continues to make the statements over and over again. So E. Jean Carroll rested her case. Donald Trump failed to disclose his experts on time, so didn't really have any witnesses to call other than Donald Trump. There was one other witness that he recalled super briefly. And then Donald Trump was called to the stand. But before Trump was called to the stand, federal judge Lewis Kaplan made clear, look, Donald Trump was already found liable for rape. So he can't go and take the stand and claim that it didn't happen or try to do a redo of the other trial. So Ms. Haba, what is it that he's going to testify to. And Alina Haba didn't have really any good answers. And she goes, but what I would like to do is maybe ask him. And then Judge Kaplan said, no, that's not how I conduct my court. I'm going to do it my way, not your way. And then Donald Trump was like, well, I never even met this woman. I don't know who she was. I never even got a chance to testify at the first trial. And then Judge Kaplan said, can you please be quiet, Mr. Trump? Silence yourself, Mr. Trump. And then Donald Trump went quiet and Trump tried to say one other thing. And then Judge Kaplan said, I said, silence yourself, Mr. Trump. And Trump listened to it, by the way. And Trump went quiet. You have to kind of confront Donald Trump like that. You know how he behaves like a little baby? Unfortunately, sometimes you got to treat him like a petulant, like whiny, like bad boy baby. You got to like, <laughs> gotta like talk to him. It's really bizarre that you have to do that. But if you look through historical references, that is what he actually like responds to. You remember uh, before the January 6th insurrection when his team of United States attorneys and like the top people at the DOJ showed up and they were like, if you appoint these people, we're resigning and we're going to go public with this. And then Donald Trump backed down like you can't be scared of him. He's very weak if you can just confront him. And so far, the Republicans have had no spine to confront him, and he's actually someone easy to confront. And in a weird way, he likes other people to do the confrontation for him, and he kind of hides behind other people. That's part of his malignant narcissism and kind of utter weakness, and other authoritarians know that about him. That's why he's like a wannabe authoritarian. He's like the authoritarian sidekick, right? Like he looks up to Kim Jong-un. Right. He looks up to Vladimir Putin. He looks up to Viktor Orban. He looks up to President Xi in China. And how do I know that? Because he says that he says that in his speech. So one of the other funny things is Steve Chung, who always kind of writes those like bizarre statements every time Donald Trump is in the news and like MAGA is the greatest movement ever. MAGA this, MAGA that. His phone went off during the trial. <laughs> that immediately kicked out for having his. So like, again, these are like like little children. Like the phone's on and he got kicked out of the courtroom for having his cell phone on. <laughs> Judge Kaplan was treating him like little children. And, you know, Donald Trump tried to get around the court's orders, but then Judge Kaplan sustained the objection by E. Jean Carroll's lawyer. The whole thing lasted like literally three minutes, but it was like one or two questions. And E. Jean Carroll's lawyers established that Donald Trump previously testified at the other trial, rather, excuse me, that Donald Trump didn't show up at the other trial, didn't testify at the other trial, that this trial was the first one that he decided to actually show up for. And so not a lot of kind of substance in his testimony. There's um, almost more substance before, like all the drama before Donald Trump took the stand for the 180 seconds, which is shorter than his encounter with Stormy Daniels up on the stand there in the courtroom. Uh, sure shorter, but yeah. Yeah, what? I'm not sure if it was shorter or not, but 
Uh, no, I mean, it's longer than his encounter with Stormy Daniels is what I meant to say. Um, he, oh, one of the best parts, too, is when Alina Haba called him to take the stand. She said, now calling President Donald Trump and Judge Kaplan corrected her and said, you mean Donald, Do Donald John Trump, the defendant. <laughs> that is who you mean. Um, so both parties rested. Closing arguments on Friday. We could have a verdict as early as Friday afternoon, wow. we'll keep you posted there. Should also mention that Peter Navarro was sentenced today as well by Judge Amit Mehta to the same length as Steve Bannon, four months in prison. Department of Justice was pushing for six. Navarro wanted zero. Again, it's the same as uh, Bannon. Navarro then gave this press conference uh, afterwards. You know, One of the things though, that Navarro was arguing is that he risked his life to save the oh, nation from COVID. That was one of his arguments for leniency. He said, that's what he said. He goes, the dangerous threat of COVID hit our shores. I worked tirelessly to try to save the nation. I risked my life. He paid trying himself to as an American He's hero. literally someone who like spread the most unhinged conspiracies. Like he did the worst ever, but here he is. This is kind of some good karma that he got. Let's, let's show you this video right here after his sentence. <laughs> So what I'm going to do is uh, say a few words, and I'm going to have uh, uh, several of these fine attorneys uh, behind me uh, say a few words. Uh, but <clears throat> the, the top line here is that... Uh, Knock it off. <laughs> With his attorneys, you just yell at one of the protesters. If you're an audio listener only, there were protesters behind Navarro. They were holding up signs uh, that said, lock him up. And they were blowing whistles and as this press conference was going on. And Brett, what are you going to say? And they were banging cowbells and, and he was <laughs> defeated. It's funny because it's I think it's that uh, she calls herself Anarchy Princess, who, who's been waiting for him outside of all these events. So and good. and he's got to come out of the courtroom all the time and be like, oh, oh no. Team up with Jackie <laughs> Taka. <laughs> Pina, and they could call him they could call him uh nincompoop navarro that could be his the, the, we need the tacky taka Pina to go to the next one and go nincompoop navarro we'll, we'll workshop that jordy we'll work we'll, we'll, ah, it's we'll, sold in it's sold in we workshop we'll, it, it works. we'll workshop that for those one the, the, the maximum sentence on on defying a correctional subpoena is six months so it was actually on the longer side even though four months doesn't sound like a lot uh for a sentence for something like that obviously navarro was pushing for zero months and the DOJ was pushing for the full six and and they landed at four, which is the, the yeah, same the sentencing guidelines. And so, you know, you have to follow the sentencing guidelines. But um, that's the where lawyer. I'm where sorry, the, the, just the lawyer, uh, Navarro's lawyer who attempted to stop the protesters. I just keep thinking about it. I mean, what, what did he even try and do? Hey, knock it off. Like that, that was his best attempt to stop the protesters. Navarro just, at some point just gave up too. Like the clip that goes on for about three minutes and Navarro just gives up. And he was still, of, of course, like, what did he do? He went out and he started soliciting money, uh, which he does every time he leaves the courtroom as well. And uh, yeah, and he was defeated by a couple of whistles and a cowbell. When we get back, I want to talk about one more time how the MAGA Republicans have tried to destroy the bipartisan border deal. I want to talk about some good Biden economic news. And I want to show some of the clips from the UAW endorsement of President Biden. It was a really great event. And President Biden was on fire. Sean Fain, the president of the UAW, was like A++. And, um, you know, the, the, the campaign is really starting to kind of take shape now, brick by brick in a methodical way, in a mm -hmm. thought out way. And I want to talk about that as well. Let's just take our last quick break of the show. This episode of the Midas Touch podcast is brought to you by Manicora Honey. Now it's getting cold out there and it's time to start thinking about presents for the people that you love. And this miracle of nature, well, it just fell in my lap at the perfect time. Now this is a rare super honey that is 100% natural and has some unique properties. Manukora makes Manuka honey, a single origin honey that comes from New Zealand, where the bees only feed on the nectar of the Manuka tea tree, making honey that is pure, rich, and complex with a creamier texture that's on a completely different level from the normal honey that you find at the supermarket. You could use 
use it as you would any other honey. But what puts the super in Manuka honey is that it's super rich in antioxidants and prebiotics, three times more compared to regular honey. On top of that, it contains an antibacterial compound called MGO that can be found exclusively in Manuka honey. The bottom line is that these nutrients really support your optimal immune and digestive health. And it's delicious. This is just the perfect way to treat myself with something that's going to keep me strong through the colder months and the perfect gift for the people that I love to keep them sweet and healthy too. Manakora sent me a jar and squeeze bottle of their MGO 850 Plus Manuka Honey, their best selling honey, and it's truly delicious. The creamy caramel texture, well, it melts in your mouth, and it's unlike anything I've ever tried. I can grab a spoonful out of a jar or put it in my favorite beverage or squeeze on some oatmeal. It's delicious. I add the 850 Plus Manuka Honey to my morning toast, and the flavor and consistency, it just makes for the perfect morning meal. If you head to manacora.com slash Midas, you could get $25 off their starter kit, which comes with the MGO 850 Plus Manuka Honey, a free travel pack honey sticks, a free wooden spoon, and also a free guidebook. And this is just the perfect gift for a loved one this holiday season. Now I love the jar and I love the squeeze bottle, but the extra pack of compostable honey sticks is perfect for whenever you're on the go. You can bring them with you wherever you're traveling and it makes for the perfect snack while you're running errands. So head to manukora, M-A-N-U-K-O-R-A dot com slash Midas to get $25 off your starter kit. This is just the ultimate honey. Indulge and try some honey with superpowers from Manukora. Did you know that your temperature at night can have one of the greatest impacts on your sleep quality? If you wake up too hot or too cold, I highly recommend that you check out Miracle Made's bed sheets. Inspired by NASA, Miracle Made uses silver infused fabrics and makes temperature regulating bedding so you can sleep at that perfect temperature all night long. Now using silver infused fabrics originally inspired by NASA, Miracle Made sheets are thermoregulating and designed to keep you at that perfect temperature all night so you get better sleep every night. These sheets are infused with silver that prevent up to 99.7% of bacterial growth, leaving them to stay cleaner and fresh three times longer than other sheets. No more gross odors. Miracle sheets are luxuriously comfortable without the high price tag of other luxury brands and feel as nice, if not nicer, than the bed sheets used by some five-star hotels. Stop sleeping on bacteria. Bacteria can clog your pores, causing breakouts and acne. Sleep clean with Miracle. Go to trymiracle.com slash Midas to try Miracle Made Sheets today. And whether you're buying them for yourself or as a gift for a loved one, if you order today, you can save over 40%. And if you use our promo code MIDAS at checkout, you'll get three free towels and save an extra 20%. Miracle is so confident in their product, it's backed with a 30-day money-back guarantee. So if you aren't 100% satisfied, you'll get a full refund. Upgrade your sleep with Miracle Made. Go to trymiracle.com slash Midas and use the code Midas to claim your free three-piece towel set and save over 40% off. Again, that's trymiracle.com slash Midas to treat yourself. Thank you, Miracle Made, for sponsoring this. Let's Some go. Great pro democracy sponsors Gotta right there. Midas Touch Network where can people getting go? Where can people go? two million subs, number one YouTube channel in the United States across all genres. Thanks to you, the Midas Mighty. Oh, I'm so grateful. It's such a, it's really such a special day today, and we were just so thankful for for all of your support. Absolutely, none, none of, of this is possible mind. without you. There it is. There's the moment it hits. Two oh. million subs. I love it on the market. And by the way, I, I, I love those pro democracy sponsors. If you're in the market for those products, links in the description of the audio and the YouTube descriptions. They're just one click away and just enter the promo code minus on them that we sent you. Look, here's how we're going to present the situation at the border right now, because here are the facts. Just going to show you videos of what people are saying in their own words. And we're going to judge the conduct of people. Like I just wish that it was shown in this way so we all understood what's taking place. Number one, do I believe there are urgent issues that need to be addressed at the border? I do. You know who also believes that? President Biden. You know who also believes that? Democrats in both the Senate and the House. How do I know that? Because the facts are that they've been trying to negotiate 
one of the toughest border bills. That's also humane. This is the United States of America, damn it, okay? We went in the United States of America, go put up barbed wire and, and kill children and separate families. This is the United States of America, damn it. You could be tough and not cruel and inhumane. There is a way to do that consistent with what our values should be here in the United States of America. But Democrats were negotiating a tough border bill to put the resources that were needed at the border. Detection, more border patrol, um, making adjudications quicker, making, again, humane conditions as well, addressing some of these systemic issues of where immigration flows come from. That's just the facts of the types of things that were going to be in this bill. But MAGA Republicans killed it, and they are killing this bill because Donald Trump told them to. First, let me show you this clip of an actual Republican who I respect, Mitt Romney. And here's what Mitt Romney said about the status of the bipartisan border deal that he and Senator Lankford and Democrats like Schumer were negotiating together before MAGA killed it. Play this clip. Oh, I, I, think, I think the border is a very important issue for uh, Donald Trump. Uh, and the fact that he would communicate to uh, Republican senators and Congress people that he doesn't want us to solve the border problem because he wants to blame uh, Biden for it is, uh, is really appalling. But the, but the reality is that, that uh, we have a crisis at the border. The American people are suffering as a result of uh, what's happening at the border. Uh, and someone running for president ought to try and get the, uh, you know, the problem solved as opposed to saying, hey, save that problem. Don't solve it. Uh, let me take credit for solving it later. Here's Republican Congress member Dan Crenshaw saying the same thing, basically, that you heard Mitt Romney say and also adding, and now these MAGA Republicans also want to harm Ukraine? Like what? Here, play this clip. And for whatever reason people come up with, they don't want it anymore. Um, that's going to be a pretty tough position to stand by. So, and there's a, there's, so they're saying a couple things, right? Well, we, we'll never vote for it if it's attached to Ukraine. Anymore. Really? Like we get meaningful border policy for Ukraine aid, you're not going to vote for that? So you want Russia to win more than you want border policy changes? That's a tough one. You defend that. Um, some people say, oh, well, I mean, Biden wants it now because it's helpful to him politically. Okay. I want border security. That's that's what I, that's what I told my constituents that I would do for them. So if we can get that deal, that's, that's enough brand. Here's MAGA Republican Josh Hawley, you know, whose hand was up, whose fist was up during the insurrection. Just That's moments so ago, he went on Laura Ingraham, and here's what he told Laura. Play the clip. No sound on that clip. No sound, but he told Laura Ingraham he's going to kill the bill. That's what, if you would have heard the sound, he said, <laughs> you're absolutely killing the bill. And he does the thing with his hand. Um, he doesn't do that on the video, but I, I do that for him. This is hopefully this one does have sound. This is when Laura Ingraham had Mike Johnson on and said that she just got off the phone with Donald Trump. And Donald Trump said he spoke to you essentially to kill any border bill unless Trump is responsible for it. So this is MAGA Mike Johnson, Laura Ingraham. They're just saying it out loud. Play the clip. The, the president actually uh, just got off the phone with me right before the show. And he said he has spoken to you about this deal and that he is against it. And he urged you to be against this deal. He was extremely, President Trump was extremely adamant about that. Um, your reaction to that, given the fact that, look, he already, he knows how to do this enforcement stuff. You don't need some new bill coming out of the, uh, the Senate to get the border enforced. Yeah, President Trump is not wrong. He and I have been talking about this um, uh, pretty frequently. I talked to him the uh, night before last about the same subject. We don't have the text of whatever the Senate has cooked up yet. And, and so we have to reserve judgment, I think, to see what comes out of it. It doesn't sound... And we now have the clip of Josh Hawley moments ago. By the way, the way they talk about Donald yeah. Trump, the president, he's not the president. He's not. If you want to say former president, you can say that he's not. That you didn't speak to the president. You know, you know what the kids say these days, Ben? It's called the ick when when something like like skeeve somebody out. I, I get the ick. It's when so skeevy, dude. It's it, so it skeevy. It's wrong. It's and it's just wrong. And it shows you how they're manipulating their audience and just lying to their audience and how they about live the in actual the facts. Up. By the way, this, this is a DeSantis supporter, Pete Henline, who said it's factually incorrect. This is a DeSantis guy. 
It's factually incorrect for Trump to claim he had the most secure border in history when in 2019 under him, there was more illegal immigration than during any one of Obama's eight years in office. It's just all made up nonsense. You know, and I'm reading that. That's that's a DeSantis supporter saying that because they just live. And Brett, you talked about it in this fan fiction world of Donald Trump doing things that he didn't do. They cosplay this fake reality of of him who's an actual loser who didn't do good things for the economy who was the worst possible person to handle covid who told us to inject bleach who added eight trillion dollars of debt who was actually not even good when it came to the border like he wasn't at all and and just saying we're going to build a portion of a wall is like the stupidest thing ever you know it's 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 a stupid trump i mean go back to when trump built a casino and then had three casinos compete against each other that he owned and cannibalized his own business and made casinos go out of business by doing that if I build the biggest things and, and everyone was like, no, that's not going to work. And it didn't work. And then he goes around and acts like it was a success when he destroyed so many lives back then in the 1980s. Here, play this clip of uh, play this clip of Hallie. Senator, is this deal dead effectively? Uh, I hope so. It should be. If it's not dead yet, it should be dead. I mean, there is absolutely no reason to agree to policies that will just further enable Joe Biden. And then finally, play this clip right here of what President Biden had to say previously, where he instructed everybody, let's do a bipartisan border deal. Play this clip. I've been clear from the very beginning, the system is broken. My first day in office, I sent Congress a comprehensive plan on immigration reform. My friends on the other side have done nothing with that. Over and over, I've asked for resources to step up action at the border. In October, I asked Congress to fund for funding that would add another 20 additional board, 22,000 additional border agents and officers, hundreds of new immigration judges to make the judgments on the spot, a new new detection equipment to stop fentanyl from coming into the country. And by the way, I've worked with China and Mexico to slow the flow of fentanyl in the United States. As I speak, it's way down. So let me be clear. My team has been at the table for weeks now on a partisan, with a bipartisan group of senators to negotiate a deal including border, because I believe we need significant policy changes at the border, including changes in our asylum system to ensure that we have the authorities we need to control the border. And I'm ready to act. I think, oh, God willing, and the crick not rising, as my grandpa would say, you know, I think next week we ought to be able to work out something, at least in the Senate. And I'm hopeful it's going to be the bipartisan package the Senate is going to pass, God willing. Now, the question is for the Speaker and the House Republicans. Are they ready to act as well? They have to choose whether they want to solve a problem or keep weaponizing issues to score political points against the President. I'm ready to solve the problem. I really am. Massive changes. And I mean it sincerely. Massive changes. I mean it sincerely. I want to find a bipartisan solution. That's just the way government is supposed to work. And so, look, if the media wants to report on the border, and look, Fox is a propaganda network. Fox isn't news, okay? It's a humiliating piece of crap at this point, that network. And I'm glad we're beating them on YouTube right now, even though they've got billions of dollars in investors and we're here in our living room hanging out with the Midas Mighty because there's people power that's fueling the Midas Mighty. But when other media reports on things, just show those videos. I'm showing you what Republicans who want to do a deal are saying. I'm showing you what President Biden is saying. And then I'm showing you the MAGA Republicans who are taking their orders from Donald Trump, who are trying to stop it. You could form your own judgments, but those that's the data. That's the facts. When I talk about wanting the data and the facts, I don't want to be played. I just want the facts. Brett. Tell us the facts about the economy, sir. Let's talk the economy, folks, in our new segment. How about that? This is the NetSuite by Oracle Know Your Numbers Minute. Look at that. Whoa. Nah, we're Look getting that. We're we getting. got a sponsored segment. Uh, can you do that one more time? Let's do that one more time. Do, do it one more time. Do the intro one more time? Yeah, do yeah, the intro one more time. time. This is the NetSuite by Oracle Know Your Numbers Minute. Big Woo. time. Two million subs. <laughs> Let's go. B, I Let's think your mic. Right, you may want to turn your mic. <laughs> I can't hear you. 
Your Brett's can you hear me now? Mic is off. There you go. May... Can you hear me now? Yes. Yeah, you know. my, my mic was on. Uh, there's a technical glitch on my side. Um, but no, let's actually, <laughs> I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not messing with you. I literally, literally. Well, anyway, let's get to the good news, folks, because listen, there's a lot of good news out there, right? Once again, we learned today that the United States economy defied expert predictions and is growing at a faster rate than expected. Here's the data that we got from the United States Department of Commerce. They reported that the U.S. GDP grew at a 3.3% rate during the fourth quarter of 2023. So the question is, how does that 3.3% rate stack up to what the experts were expecting? in Q4. Well, the experts predicted 1.5%. So it completely blew the projections out of the water. But that's not all. Consumer spending also grew at a 2.8% rate, while business spending grew at 1.9%. That was up from 1.4% during the third quarter. I, I made a joke last week that it feels starting to feel like Groundhog Day on this show because I feel like I say this every single episode, but the stock market hit another record high. Just every single day you have the stock market hitting record highs. You had the Dow Jones surpassed 38,000 this week and then hit a new record high today. The S&P 500 has hit record highs as well. Now for the fifth day in a row, setting record highs. And I got, I got a little fun fact for you guys. You know, it's also convenient. You know that NetSuite provides real-time financial data and analytics about the markets, helping businesses quickly adapt Ooh. to market trends. So that is a pretty useful thing if you want to know what's going on. Like this, the U.S. leads the world in economic growth and has the lowest inflation rate. Let me tell you what Beth Ann Bavino, the chief economist at U.S. Bank, had to say about today's report. She said, quote, this report feels like a supersonic Goldilocks, very strong GDP reading with cool inflation. I mean, are we going to pretend like everything in the economy is perfect? Absolutely not. Are we going to pretend that there aren't plenty of people out there struggling? Absolutely not. But if we're looking at the data and we're looking at the trends and we're looking at what people are doing, we're looking at the jobs that people are getting. We're seeing record job growth right now. We're seeing wage growth that's far outpacing inflation rates at this point. All the economic indicators right now are positive. When you compare our COVID recovery to literally that of every other country, we blow them out of the water. So there is a lot to be thankful for in the economy. And there's a lot to say about this Bidenomics approach of bottom up, middle out economics and not what Ben likes to say, trickle, 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 trickle down, which never, ever works. And it's one of the reasons, quite frankly, that you're seeing so many of these billionaires so angry right now, right? Have you ever seen billionaires be this kind of loud and, and going out there and putting all, pouring all this money in the way that they're doing to try to take down Joe Biden? I mean, why are they doing that? Because Joe Biden has a middle out, bottom up economic plan. It's as simple as that. I want to get to some more stuff, but that right there is our economic update NetSuite by Oracle, know your numbers. That was the NetSuite by Oracle, know your numbers minute. Do you know your own numbers for your business? Download NetSuite's ultimate KPI checklist right now at netsuite.com slash Midas. I feel yeah, so. Go to netsuite.com slash Midas. Oh. And there's, they sponsored that segment. I like that segment a lot right there where we talk about the economy. They're also on social media. They're at NetSuite, at N-E-T-S-U-I-T-E -E as well, where they have a lot of great data there as well about the product also that I was reading before the show as well. So some some great stuff there. But, I love but that. You could also let them know that you enjoyed that segment. Yeah, let them know, you enjoyed, that segment. Let them know you enjoyed that segment. Yeah, tell them Midas Touch sent you. Anyway, here's something else I want to tell you about. I thought this was one of the most powerful moments of the week. And this is a pivotal moment, I think, in the Biden-Harris campaign. This week, you had the United Auto Workers Union endorse President Biden and Vice President Kamala Harris for re-election in 2024. The UAW, when you take the workers that are active and the retired workers, has somewhere near a half a million people 
associated with this union. And then you could look at obviously these a lot of these people have families, right? A lot of people, they have connections with other unions. This endorsement is one of the biggest possible endorsements you could get. And it was came at one of the earliest times that the UAW has ever endorsed a president, period. The UAW made a point of it. They said, we're not just going to dole out our endorsement to anybody. You are going to have to earn our endorsement. And then at this event, they said, guess what? President Biden did, in fact, earn this endorsement. We saw President Biden out there on the picket lines, marching with workers. A president has never done that, fighting for workers. I mean, he really stuck his neck out there. It could have completely backfired. But what we saw were wages increased. We saw retirement benefits improved in one of the best negotiated deals that the UAW has ever received from the automakers. And it wasn't just a tepid endorsement, right? It wasn't just like, and we endorse President Biden, go Biden, right? Sean Fain, the president of the United Auto Workers Union, was forceful in his support of President Biden and in his rejection of Donald Trump forceful. And I want to show you a few clips of this because I think that Fain of the UAW, the UAW president, I think Fain is going to be one of the single best surrogates now that President Biden and Vice President Kamala Harris have in this campaign. Just watch what he said here. Now, here's what Trump did to help the American auto worker in our 2023 historic stand up strike now that he's running for president. He went to a non-union plant, <laughs> invited by the boss, and trashed our union. That's right. And here is what Joe Biden did during our stand-up strike. He heard the call, and he stood up, and he showed up. joined us in solidarity on the picket line for the first time in our nation's history. A sitting president has ever done that. He said on live national TV that the big three, and I quote, should go further to ensure that record corporate profits mean record contracts for the UAW and the workers. So that's a choice we face. It's not about who you like. It's not about your party. It's not this bullshit about age. It's not about anything but our best shot at taking back power for the working class. I, I think oh. I think I think Sean Fain is incredible. And and Sean Fain, by the way, even after that, what did he do? He hit the TV circuit. He was on Fox News and he was delivering that same message to Fox News viewers, which I think is so important and so powerful. And Fox is threatened by them. You had Laura Ingram tonight trashing the UAW. That's their move. The UAW, oh, they're scummy. They're corrupt. Like that's what they do. They try to attack anybody who's a threat and they know that the UAW union is strong and they know that they are a threat. We had President Biden also speak during this event. President Biden called, uh, said that Donald Trump is the next Herbert Hoover uh, because he is the only president other than Hoover to leave the White House losing jobs. And we know that that's Donald Trump's biggest fear. He even said that recently is to be compared in history like he is Herbert Hoover. Hoover. He already is Hoover. Uh, absolutely. I mean, we remember the bread lines. We remember uh, it, all those Hoover. lines at the unemployment offices. Per Pervert Hoover. 
Pervert Hoover. Pervert, per, pervert Hoover. <laughs> is that what you said? Or is that a, per, pervert Hoover is a good one. Yeah, absolutely. And then and Biden had a message to the workers, which I think is important. I've always fought for a strong auto industry with UAW built cars leading the world. This is what this is about a simple proposition. You built these iconic companies. You built GM. You built you built these companies. You sacrificed to save them in the worst of times. And you deserve to benefit when these companies thrive. As Sean said, record profits mean record contracts. Amazing. Love that. And that was not the only issue that President Biden was speaking about this week as well. He was speaking about unions and he was also speaking about the importance of reproductive freedom. You had President Biden and Vice President Kamala Harris holding their first joint event together of the 2024 election cycle in Virginia, rallying voters to restore Roe. This is right around the 51st anniversary of the Roe decision. And here was President Biden's message to MAGA Republicans. The Dobbs decision practically dared women of America to be heard. In writing, they said, women are not without electoral or political power. No kidding. I said at the time, I don't think this court and the MAGA Republicans have any clue about the power of women in America. I don't think they have any clue. But they're about to find out. Campaign Joe. Gotta love it. Gotta love it. And in more good news, quickly, you know, today, President Biden announced over $5 billion in major infrastructure funding for 37 projects across America. It's all funded by the bipartisan infrastructure law. We are seeing a lot of momentum, folks. And I thought this is the right thing to do and a really smart thing to do politically as well. But you had President Biden and First Lady Dr. Jill Biden invited Kate Cox to be a guest of honor at the mm. upcoming State of the Union address that's happening on March 7th. If you, if you remember, Kate Cox is the Texas woman who is at the center of the abortion case in Texas who was forced to flee the state in order to get life-saving care. She will be the President and First Lady's guest of honor in the room at the State of the Union on March 7th. I think that you makes remember, a statement right there. You remember at the last State of the Union, Marjorie Taylor Greene dressed up as a white Chinese spy balloon? That was, uh, yes. Uh, that was, that was, yeah. was that only a year did, ago. And she did that. That was, that that was, was last year. Uh, time flies. I, time, time flies. Time flies, folks. Um, <laughs> we're going to be doing a gender reveal party about Jordy's baby. Let's go. At patreon.com slash let's go. So our after show is going to be focused on these last few days before it, it, it could happen while Jordy is doing the after show. The the, the it definitely it could be born. Any could happen now the this show could here. happen. So join us and jo join us for the Jordy <laughs> baby gender reveal. Can we can we talk about the baby's name on the after show also? Or we'll get into we'll get into some things. We'll definitely do the gender reveal. That's gender reveal. I'm, so wait, where where can people come to come to the gender reveal? Patreon.com slash Midas Touch. And one of the good things about Patreon.com slash Midas Touch too is look, we don't have outside investors here on the Midas Touch network. And you saw the graph that we showed you that Midas Touch is now beating Fox on YouTube. Think about it. There it is right there. There's the data and Forbes. They're funded by billions of dollars of outside investors. We're sitting in our living rooms, right? <laughs> We're sitting, sitting in my living room right now. Brett's in his little room. Jordy's in his bedroom or wherever Jordy is. <laughs> And this network, because of you, it's not funded by billionaires who want to undermine our democracy. It's people powered. And so one of the ways we build this network is through those emojis with that little dollar sign you see below on Classic. the YouTube chat. 
not exactly how Fox funds their network, but that's how we do it with <laughs> by releasing emojis. The other way is through our pro democracy sponsors. So shout out to all of our pro democracy sponsors, and we hope you did like our new segment right there with NetSuite. I thought that yeah, was comment, leave a comment too if you like if you enjoyed the NetSuite. You want to see more of that going forward because that was a really awesome uh, you know update right there. And then our after show, which is an exclusive podcast that we do on patreon.com slash Midas Touch after the show. Um, and then we do once a month a meeting with all the Midas Mighty on a Zoom. So you can meet Brett and Jordy and myself. And we're going to be scheduling that for sometime next week as well. Um, that'll be our January meeting meetup on Zoom. So that's patreon.com slash Midas Touch. We have a new newsletter. As well, we hope you're all enjoying the newsletter where we send once or twice a day some of the updates in the on MidasTouch.com. You go to MidasTouch.com slash newsletter. That's MidasTouch.com slash newsletter. Sign up. You'll get emails from Brett, Jordy, and myself and from our whole team. You'll get breaking news updates sent to your email and other great news when we hit milestones like we did today. And so again, MidasTouch.com slash newsletter. And finally, as we hit 2 million, I just want to thank each and every one of you members of the Midas Mighty. This isn't possible without you. This is not just a network. This is not a like not just a company. This is a community. This is an unapologetically pro-democracy community. And there have been so many communities out there that focus on like bad things and mm -hmm. like harming people and bullying people and misogyny and hate and otherizing people. And oftentimes the media, when they push these narratives, prop up like those bad communities. So to me, building a community with you all and the community that you all built here that's built on empathy and compassion and love and supporting each other and trying to find solutions, normalcy over chaos, democracy over dictatorship, spreading positivity. You don't usually get a lot of big communities, unfortunately, developing around those great ideals. And you all wanted it and you all created it. And we're just happy to be a part of it with you all. Thank you from the bottom of our heart. You hit 2 million today and we are grateful to be on this journey with you. And we're all just getting started. Thank you so much for watching. And Jordy, take it away. Shout out to the Midas Mighty. The Midas Mighty standing strong. At Midas Touch, we are unapologetically pro-democracy and we demand justice and accountability. That's why we're spreading our message to Convict 45. That's right, gear up right now with your Convict 45 tees and pins at store.midastouch.com. That's store.midastouch.com.